Armored Core 6 is out and actually really well optimized for what it is. This video will show you how to get the competitive edge out of your graphics options to get even more performance while keeping it looking really crispy and of course even better than what it does at max settings. I'll get into that in just a bit. For now, I won't be touching on Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below you'll find a Windows 10, 11 and Nvidia optimization guides to get the most out of your PC. This video only focuses on specific in-game options, so with that further ado, let's get there. Here we are in Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon, and if you're on a PC like mine, things may look very dark and washed out. If so, HDR is enabled in-game and probably not on your monitor, that's the first thing you're likely going to want to change. In the system section here, head down to graphics settings, and inside of here, we should find HDR, which is currently on. If I turn this off, you should notice a ton more color and brightness come back to the game. If you have HDR on and your monitor's HDR is enabled as well, it'll probably look just as good, if not even better in game with very minimal performance impact. That being said, while we're here in the graphics settings section, we should start at the very top with screen mode. For this, I'd highly recommend setting this to full screen as this will give you the highest possible performance and lowest possible input latency, which is what you'll definitely want for this game. As for resolution, it should match your monitor or at least be a compatible resolution. Otherwise, if it's too high, you'll be pushing pixels you don't see, and too low, everything will be unnecessarily blurry. The limit frame rate option here has a few options, 30, 60, 90, 120. Even though your screen doesn't reach 120, you can uncap it, or at least mostly uncap it, by setting it to 120. If your monitor goes faster than any one of these options here, you'll probably have a few more options, but that I'm not entirely sure of. As for VSync, we should definitely turn this off, unless you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up. HDR, we've already been through, it should have a very minimal to no performance impact, but it could make the game look a heck of a lot better if you have an HDR compatible display that has some pretty good color output. Adjust brightness and image quality are both your preference, though the image quality is only applicable when you have HDR enabled. Auto detect best rendering settings should automatically adjust our settings while we're playing the game, but I'd recommend you have this off as we'll set our graphics options to be the best that they can be to keep the best performance so that things aren't shifting to lower and higher quality settings while we're playing the game resulting in quite a bit of frame stuttering and other common issues. Then we have quality settings where we can choose between a few presets. If you have an absolutely baller PC, feel free to choose maximum. If you have something less than that, then obviously pick something closer to your setup, but you'll be surprised how hardware runs this game as it's pretty well optimized as is. Let's get into the quality settings. The biggest impact on performance is probably going to be the texture quality at the very top. Now this should be completely dependent on how much VRAM you have on your PC. This option should be set to maximum if you have more than 8 or so gigabytes of RAM on your graphics card, high if you have around 6 gigs, medium if you have around 3 to 4 gigs of VRAM, and anything below that set this to low. If you set this option too high for your graphics card, you'll definitely tank FPS, but having this set to a lower option, not using all of your available VRAM, you're just going to lower the quality of the actual game itself without gaining too many extra FPS. So set this based on how much VRAM your graphics card has. Anti-aliasing is entirely your preference, and usually disabling this completely should give us a huge boost in FPS and allow us to see better into the distance. Though if you absolutely hate jagged edges, this is something you can leave on low or even high. SSAO you can comfortably leave on maximum. Depth of field are different definitely recommend disabling completely no matter what settings you have and the same goes for motion blur. These two options here, having these set to off, will definitely greatly improve your visibility while in game, which is a huge competitive advantage. As for shadow quality, you should set this to high if you'd like the best looking image while still keeping a handful of extra FPS. This is an option you can lower greatly, though between high and maximum, there's very little difference in actual perceivable shadow quality but you'll notice a large bump in FPS when you lower this too high. Obviously, you can lower this further if you're not going to be focusing on shadows and don't think they'll distract you. If you can lower the shadow option, it's probably a good idea to do so. But high is a good compromise between a really good looking game and good FPS. Lighting quality and effect quality, I'd recommend keeping both of these on a maximum if you have a PC that's able to push this. These two options
options you may need to lower, but they should be pretty situational and lowering them shouldn't net you too many extra FPS. If you don't want to keep them on maximum, set them on high. For me, I'll be keeping these on maximum, but volumetric fog quality is definitely an option we'll want to lower from maximum to high to keep a really good looking game while benefiting from an added FPS boost. There's very little quality between maximum and high volumetric fog options. Reflection quality, you can leave on maximum with higher powered systems and it should keep things looking really good. Water and shader quality, I'd also recommend keeping to high. And finally, ray tracing, you may have this option grayed out entirely, but it only applies to the garage section of the game, so it's not during gameplay. You can enable this if you like a better looking garage, as you're not going to be running around and doing things while you're there. It's definitely an option you can raise if you have an RTX graphics card and you find that turning on RTX doesn't tank your FPS to unplayable numbers. If you drop to 30 FPS from 60 and you can handle that kind of change for a much better looking game, this is something you should enable, otherwise leave it set to off. So there you have it. These are my optimized settings for keeping the game looking as good as possible while gaining quite a few FPS. If you're in the mid 30 FPSs, this will comfortably take you all the way up to the low 50s, which is a really good performance boost, taking you from just playable to really playable while keeping the game looking pretty much just as good as it does on maximum settings. But of course, this may not be the thing that you're looking for. If you have a lower powered PC, let's get into a more highly optimized setting set that should work for much lower powered graphics cards. Obviously, if we're considering lower powered graphics cards, VRAM is definitely something we need to think about and texture quality may be something you need to lower. But once again, as long as you have enough VRAM to have this set to a higher option, I'd highly recommend that you do as the game will look a heck of a lot better with practically no performance impact at all. Anti-aliasing, I'd definitely recommend keeping to off. SSAO set to medium or even low. Depth of field and motion blur off as well. Shader quality, shadow, lighting and effect quality I'd recommend lowering all of these to medium. If you need any more performance out of your PC, try lowering the shadow quality further. But as for the lighting and effects quality, these two will be more situational. If you find that you're dropping FPS in certain areas more than others, these are the options that you may want to lower a bit further. Volumetric fog, if you're going to be lowering this from maximum to high, you'll notice practically no difference, but you'll start to notice a difference below this. Low is going to give you the best performance here, but you may find it a bit distracting. Reflection quality, if you're clawing for FPS and you don't exactly need the best looking game, you can comfortably lower this all the way down as you're not really going to lose anything that affects your gameplay. Reflections aren't something you're going to be focusing on and the same goes for shadows as well. If you can handle lower quality shadows, then do so and the same goes for reflection quality. But for me, I'd maybe set this to medium if there was a middle ground option here, much like I have with the shadows up here. Water surface quality, once again, you can lower this down to low without losing too much if you're on a super low end system. And finally, shader quality, you can set this down to medium and possibly lower on lower end systems. With these medium settings, it should really work for even low end graphics cards and keep our game looking actually surprisingly good. These were super optimized settings until I managed to reset everything. You know what? Let's see what kind of FPS we get. Setting the quality up to maximum and heading into game, you can see what things look like here in the tutorial. If you find that while you're running around and blowing things up, you're dropping quite a few FPS, that'll be your effects option that you'll want to tweak. Now, as you can see, things in the distance are very blurry, and while we're playing the game, they become even more blurry. This is depth of field and motion blur, and the two options that I highly recommend you change. So on pretty much any setup, in a graphic settings quality, disabling depth of field completely and motion blur should give you a huge improvement in how the game looks, especially while you're looking around. Super cool. Then moving from a stable 116, 115 FPS on a 3080 Ti, yes, it's really overkill. Disabling anti-aliasing, you should see an immediate improvement all the way up to a stable 120-ish FPS, and we've actually made the game look quite a bit better as well. In the distance, you'll start to notice some jagged edges and things like that, especially on these straight lines. But if you're comfortable with 
that kind of thing, I definitely recommend keeping anti-aliasing disabled completely as it'll gain you quite a few extra FPS, especially on super low end systems. Let's jump from our maximum options here down to our optimized settings. So we'll see just how good the game can still look while we gain quite a few extra FPS. So we had maximum off, maximum off, off, high, maximum, 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 high, high. And that was our optimized settings from maximum down one step with the options that'll really make a huge difference in your FPS. And with that, you should see a huge increase in FPS, though I obviously don't have one here on this absolutely overkill system. Unfortunately, due to the FPS cap, it is going to be very difficult to show you quantifiably on my setup what the difference is. I do have a much lower powered system, but it's a little bit too low powered. Anyways, you'll just have to take my word for it. Then for our super optimized settings for much lower end systems, it was high, off, medium, off, off, medium, 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 or even low for shadow quality, volumetric fog, low, reflection, low, water, low, and shader quality was medium. With these options, we should see a huge increase in FPS. Of course, not seeing one here due to the FPS cap, but the game still looks actually really good with these options, which is great. We've lowered the options that give us the biggest FPS increase while not costing us too much in-game graphic fidelity. It's definitely worthwhile picking these settings if you're on a much lower end system. Heading back into the graphic settings, if with even the lowest settings here, you're dropping quite a few FPS, you may need to lower your resolution, but unfortunately at this current point in time, as far as I can tell, there isn't a built-in DLSS or FSR option, which is a little bit upsetting as those can gain you quite a few extra FPS for pretty much zero graphic impact. But anyways, for the most part, that's really it with this quick optimization guide. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.